In a previous video, we uh, looked at how to create tie-level textures. I took this uh, photograph, which I, um, I had taken of a stone wall near, uh, near my house here, and I showed you how to make it something that is tie-level so that this left side wraps around and meets the right side and so that the top side wraps around and meets the bottom side. Now what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about bump maps uh, with this uh, particular texture. So sometimes what people might do is uh, simply apply the same color map uh, as the bump map in their 3D package. And we'll take a look at that now. So here we are in Maya. Uh, I've already created a scene where I have this uh, this kind of rounded cube here, and I've got some lights in my scene. Um, but it's currently just using the default shader. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to my Hypershade and create a new material for this, uh, this object here. And we'll go ahead and find that uh, stone wall tileable texture that I created in an earlier video. And here it is. So I'll go ahead and apply that. Uh, I don't think I've applied the material yet to this, so let me just middle mouse drag it onto there. Uh, evidently, I've already pressed six on my keyboard or seven on my keyboard so that we're actually seeing the texture on here. Uh, here is my uh, texture. However, I'm not tiling it yet. I'm not tiling this texture yet. So let's go ahead and come in here to my place 2D texture node and I'm going to tile it four times on the U and four times on the V so that we're actually tiling this texture and you'll notice uh, that it is in fact tiling because if you notice there's this stone here and if we rotate around here's that stone again uh, it repeats okay So I've applied uh, that same texture, the color texture, as the bump map here, as you can see. Uh, it's not working yet. We can get this to work better, though. Uh, if you remember, I made the color texture tile, so I actually need to do the same for my bump map. I'll tile it four and four, and that's looking a lot better. And in fact, it looks, uh, it looks pretty nice. Um, let's take a look at it without the uh, color map, however. So I'm going to select my material, and I'm going to break the color channel here. And here's what our bump map looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to uh, Photoshop and, and we'll try something a little bit different with this bump map. We'll actually try creating uh, our own custom bump map instead of using the uh, color texture as both a color texture and bump map. So we just looked at um, in Maya where I had applied this as both a color and a bump map. However, I have already painted my own uh, custom bump map, and here it is. Now, how is this going to differ from this? Well, if we look at this image and we look at the different values, the darks and the lights in here, they don't really indicate elevation. Uh, it gives us a nice sense of roughness to, um, to the material in Maya, but doesn't really give us a sense of elevation where some areas come out further than others, other areas are more recessed in. So that's what this texture uh, should do a better job at. And we'll go ahead and go back into Maya now and test out uh, this texture as the bump map. So here we are back in Maya. Uh, we're looking at uh, this mesh once again. Uh, I took the color map off, if you remember, so that we could focus on just the bump map. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to swap out uh, the 
a stone wall image for the actual bump map that I created. So I'll open up my Hypershade and notice what it looks like now. In fact, perhaps we can zoom out a little so that you can see it while I do this. What I'm going to do is uh, connect my bump map to this uh, bump map node here. So it'll replace it with this bump map here. Now the problem is that currently I don't have it, uh, evidently I didn't set it up to tile properly. So let's go ahead and just set that up. So now it's tiling uh, four and four, just like what we did with the color image. And here we can really focus on what it looks like without the color on it. And you can see that it responds very well to the light. It looks much more like uh, these are stones uh, coming out. Let's go ahead and reconnect the uh, color channel to this as well. And here we have our, our material with both a color map and a bump map applied to it. So what are uh, the advantages of this? Well, uh, it allows us to get a sense of more model modeling than there actually is. Um, but on, on top of that, uh, one of the nice things about it is that we can adjust the light and the light will react appropriately. Now, zoom in on this a little bit more so that we can see it a little bit better. You'll notice that as I move the light, if I move the light up, uh, that we get these nice shadows underneath the rocks. If I move the light over this way, this area becomes brighter and this area gets uh, in shade. You can see that these rocks are shaded on their right side now. Or we can reverse it over here. And now they're shaded on their left side. So that's the benefit of uh, using a bump map, that it gives you more of a sense of uh, realism with your textures with your materials.